How's everyone doing? My name is Jason from South Bay Creations and today I'm going to show you how to convert an Epson Stylus Pro 1400. This guy right here. Well, Stylus Photo, not a Pro. Close enough. So if you look back a couple videos, there was um, a video I did that we talked about flushing out the print head with a second set of cartridges that had cleaning solution inside of them. Uh, now that only applies if you buy a used printer, which 90% of the printers you're going to find today for these older models, the 1400, the 1430, 1900, the 2800, all these different ones that you can use for uh, to convert to DTF, they're going to be used. And you're going to want to, some people don't do it, and it's up to you, this is just my suggestion, is to flush out the old pigment ink from the print head. Some people do it with the DTF ink, but whatever. I suggest doing it with cleaning solution just because uh, it does a better job. It does a better job. It's a mild detergent um, that's designed to clean a print head, okay? Um, so the first thing we're gonna do, anyways, that, that video is back, I don't know, maybe three or four videos ago. Um, currently the cleaning cartridges are still in here. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and finish it off and remove the rollers and then we're also going to we're going to put it up on its side here and we're going to do the um, external waste tank because this thing doesn't actually have doesn't actually have a waste tank it has a waste ink pad which basically the waste ink when you do the head cleanings get dumped inside the printer on the pad there's a pad that's in the valley between the rollers, the the feed rollers, and then the output rollers, there's a valley in there that has like a pad. Well, on either side, there's a, um, I guess it's a pad, whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> there, That's where it dumps the waste ink. So if you take a paper towel and you fold it up and kind of dab that area, you'll see there's a lot of ink there from over the years of doing head cleanings from the previous owner. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute once we get in close up on this. But uh, let's talk about this. Let me move the camera forward. You can kind of see this a little bit better. Actually, we'll move it over here. Sorry, guys. Let me see here. Okay, you don't really need to see me. You need to see what I'm doing. So basically, when you turn this thing sideways, there's a couple screws right here, okay? You got a screw down here, a screw right here, and then there's one back here in the middle. Let me see. Yeah, you can see that. Right here. Okay, so there's three of them. It's a Phillips, which is the cross. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Phillips, it's just the cross one. You want to go ahead and take those screws out. What we're doing is we need to take off this side panel, okay? So it's not a huge operation. It's not difficult. If you have a Phillips screwdriver, you know it's it's pretty pretty easy to do it okay so there's three screws put those off to the side because we're gonna need to put those back in and put that panel back on if you want to all right make sure you can see what I'm doing I just zoom in a little bit Okay, so we want to just kind of, you know, pull this panel back a little bit, all right? There's a couple clips along the side here that are hooked into this panel. And then down on the bottom, now this is going to be difficult to see, but I'll do the best that I can. There's two openings right here. There's a little arrow right on each one of them. You need a flathead screwdriver, like so, and just put it in there and kind of pry up a little bit. That's going to release the, the clip. Don't pry too hard because you don't want to break it. But you can see that this is already pretty loose. All right? It doesn't take much. See, it's off. I mean, that, that was it. So there's the panel. So this is just basically to have access. I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's already a maintenance, uh, external maintenance tank in here. 
and I wanted to go over this again because I didn't film it the first time that I did this. So now I am, so you already see the hose and everything here, but I'm gonna tell you what you need to do. The hose that comes right here, okay, this comes from the capping station and it's gonna connect to this hose that you're gonna add. Okay, this is like a piece of aquarium tubing. You can get it like, you know, Walmart in the pet section or even at Home Depot, they have this clear tubing. This is small stuff, it's 1 8 inch. And you're gonna connect it to this factory hose right here. All right? And you'll need to have a small barb. You get this from the auto parts store, okay? It's basically a hose connector butt connector i don't know what you know what the proper term for it is it's it's a hose connector it connects two hoses together it splices two hoses together well that's going to go right in there and connect the factory hose with this hose that you're adding okay once you put that in and put this in you could either leave this back cover off what i did was drill the hole in the back of this here so it's kind of, so I can still leave the cover on the back side of it just because there's a lot of dust here. All right. So once you have that done and you have your piece of tube hanging out, I, I suggest that you have at least two or three feet. Um, so when you have this on your desk, wherever it's set up at, you have this running down to the floor into like a soda bottle or a water bottle or something that you can use. I've seen guys put trays right next to it and just leave it, you know, into that little tray, like a small Tupperware, which is fine, but I'm clumsy and I'll knock that thing over and there'll be ink everywhere. It'll be a big mess. So get a bottle. That's what I suggest. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together now, and then we're gonna continue on and go ahead and remove the rollers. Putting it back together is gonna to be the same thing in reverse. Put this back on like so. It snaps back into place, okay, it's secure. Put the screws back in and you're good to go okay again it's three screws two here one here in the middle and you just want to move this enough so it releases the clips that are holding on this side all right those two little slots right down here right there and right there pry up with the screwdriver and that panel pops right off all right let me get it set up and i'll be back in one second we'll get ready to remove the rollers All right, guys, guys and gals, I should say. So what we're looking at here, these are the rollers. These are the rollers that normally would hold the paper or whatever you're printing on as it's coming out of the, the printer, all right? And there's a whole series of them all across the, all across the front here from end to end. So what we wanna do is we wanna take out all of those rollers except this one here. And then there's one in the front of that, all right? Now, mind you, that is if you're going to only print 13 by 19 paper or film, the A3 plus size or Super B, okay? Because if you're only gonna do A4, then you're gonna to wanna to take your A4 sheet and put it inside here so you can see where the film comes to and remove that roller. If, the, if this is the one that catches the edge, if the A3 sheet comes to right here, then you're gonna wanna remove all of them except for the last one on each side. So not just here, you're gonna wanna do it, turn my light over here so we can see, you're gonna wanna do it on both sides. So down over here, and then across the front over there. All these in the center come out. Some people remove this whole piece of plastic and you can do that as long as you still have those end rollers left in there. And the reason why I say you've, you've got to leave those end rollers in there is because when the sheet leaves here, these are the feed rollers right in here, right underneath here. When the sheet leaves that, the film leaves that and comes out to here, and there's no rollers here to hold it, the sheet is basically loose, 
all right so every time the print go the head goes over it the sheet for one is going to pop up and it's going to hit the bottom of the print head and then it's going to smear it back and forth back and forth back and forth if you've ever noticed in some of the groups uh, you'll see some people with that question why does my print head hit at the end of the page well that's exactly why because there's nothing to hold that piece of film when they're printing so that's why you want to leave the one on either side sometimes i like to leave two like i'll i'll leave you know this one here and this one here but i've noticed this one gets in the way sometimes uh, it just depends on how close to the edge that you print since i do prints for uh, other people i removed this last one this not the last one but the second to the last one so i just have the the back one and then the front one in there to hold the film so i'm going to go ahead and do that i'm going to show you one uh, how to do it the way that I do it uh, some people will grab them with pliers and kind of yank them out like bad teeth which is cool you know if that's that's the way they do it no problem but as long as it works I have a little hook tool all right here's another one these are called mechanics picks they have a little handle at one end Home Depot has similar tools like this, or even Harbor Freight for just a few dollars. Okay, it has a little handle. Or you can use, you know, if you got a, a pair of pliers like so, you can use those to get in there to kind of grab them and pull them out. My hands don't fit in there very well with those pliers, so I've been using the hook tool to do it. And I just kind of grab the side of it let me make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing and not my hands. Okay, you see how that comes up? Now make sure you get it because you don't want this thing to go under that tray and get stuck under there. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. Most of them have two wheels and then that's the spring that retains it. You're going to destroy the spring pulling it out. It's just going to happen. These are going in the trash anyways. We're not going to use them again. All right. It's relatively simple. You just got to be able to grab. Let me see if I can get one a little bit better so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay. You see how I just kind of hooked it on the side? They're plastic, so this little hook kind of digs into the plastic and pulls it. All right. So I pull it up and then I get in there with my fingers and I grab it. Well, I just dropped it, but you get the idea. If you do drop it, make sure you find where they go because if they get stuck underneath there or if the spring doesn't get out all the way and there's a piece hanging down, it's going to drag on the film. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these off camera so I can get them done quicker and then we'll continue. All right, so I got all the rollers out. <clears throat> As you can see, oh, I just left the last ones in. This center section comes out as a piece. Okay, it has little clips right here. There's you know four or five of them along this thing, and you can just remove this whole piece. This doesn't affect the film moving around because you still have your end ones your end wheels there but what i wanted to show you down here was this is the ink pad this is the where all the waste ink goes until we put that external tank on there we're going to get out of here and, and get the wider view and get the other cartridges installed we're going to put a sys system on here and then we're going to go ahead and prime those cartridges so we'll be back in one second all right, I wanted to show you real quick. When you're filling up a sys, the easiest thing to do is get some small funnels from the hardware store, Home Depot or, or wherever, Lowe's. <clears throat> because if you're going to try to pump in all that fluid with 10 milliliter syringes, you're going to be there for a while. <laughs> so it's easier just to take the little funnel and pour it right in.
And don't forget, make sure you shake up your ink before you pour it in there. And of course, grab a different funnel for each color because you don't want to cross contaminate. So what I was saying is it's, it's more economical to get the one liter bottles as opposed to uh, buying the smaller bottles. And you can get these at uh, VVI, VVinks.com, VibrantVibesInks.com. All right, there's a link in the description where you can get these, non-affiliate link, of course. So we got that done there. Just wash those funnels out in the sink. It's water-based ink. Wipe it out with the rag first. I'm just gonna set them off to the side for right now to get them out of my weight. All right. So when you get this system here, it comes with a little baggie. Well, they give you these little vents. Can you see that? All right, these are a little vent, and they go in the top of the cis in the tanks, where these little caps plug into. There's a hole here. Remove that and put these little vents in there, just like so. They just kind of one side is. The tube is thicker than the other side, and the big, the bigger one goes into that, into the tank. They just push in. That's all. Just like so. We got an extra one for some reason. On the cartridges themselves, these are the vent holes here. Now it's going to race down, and they're going to race into the. We're gonna start filling up quick. You wanna keep an eye on that because <clears throat> it will overflow and come out of this hole. So keep an eye on those while it's filling. Keep it lower. Once they get full or start to get close enough to the top, then you're gonna to wanna to put those caps on but you have to keep an eye on them. They're kind of hard to see where the levels are, but just watch through the holes here. Like this yellow is coming up. Eh, it's getting there, but it's not quite. To get ready to lift it up higher than the tank, like so. See, I overfilled that one a little bit. Not overfilled, but came out of the hole. Like I said, you're going to make a mess. <laughs> it's inevitable. You might as well get used to having ink on your hands because with DTF printing, the amount of maintenance that it requires, you're going to get ink on your hands, all right? So this is full. On the bottom of these cartridges, there's a plastic seal because they're new. So it keeps all the debris out and whatnot. So what you want to do is take your syringe. There's no needle on there nothing on there it's just the syringe itself insert it into the bottom all right you're going to break through that seal insert it into the bottom and give it some pressure pull it back you got to tilt it a little bit 
Okay, don't let it go and you don't want to push the air back in the tank. Pull it out while you're still holding it back, okay? Put it back into here. And do it again. You just want to make sure that you get the air out from there and especially inside the internal internal lines inside the cartridge. You want to make sure you get ink through there and get the air out, okay? See how it's... At first, when you pull it, it might not go, so you got to give it a little bit of a tilt. And while you're holding it back, pull it, pull it out. Don't let it go because it'll push the air right back into it, all right? So when you get two pretty good solid um, syringefuls of ink, you should be good with that. Now, put this one off to the side, or you can go wash it out if you only got one syringe with yours, or if you only have one syringe laying around. I brought a bunch of extras just in case. I was Boy Scout, that's what we do. We always go prepared. You're gonna do all, the, all of these cartridges just like that, okay? Tilt it, see how it fills it up. Now pull it out while you still have the pressure. Back in the in the tank. All right, and then do it again. Nothing. Tilt it. There we go. All right, and just. Continue on, all right? And go ahead and do the rest of them. I'll do the rest of these off camera real quick. Try not to make this video too long. You get the point. You can always message me if, if you need uh, help on that. All right, so here we are. We got everything filled up. We got them primed. All the lines are full. If you notice, one or two air bubbles in the lines, that's perfectly fine. So go ahead and move your cartridge holder to the middle. Make sure that there's no kinks in this line and when you put it in, it goes in pretty straight. Okay, be careful with it. This is how the line is gonna go like so. So make sure that when it ends up over here, like see mine is twisted. All right. So now it's good right there. Snap it in place. What I do is push it all the way to the edge. That's the farthest point. And then I'm gonna put in the, this little guy. This is the holder that's gonna hold this line out of the way. And I like to put it right here in the middle. That's what works out best for me. Okay, you can adjust the slack. It comes with double-sided tape on it. Just peel that off. Stick it down like so. You know, make sure you got slack all the way to the end because it, it will go down to the end there. That's where it's gonna dump the ink. And then bring it all the way back and make sure, see it's tight right there. It's gonna go past this, okay? It's gonna go past where the cartridges would normally sit, where it parks. So see, it's too tight right there. It's pulling on it. So give it some slack. Not too much slack, but just enough, because you don't want this dragging down on the bottom. Check it. So you kind of gets it gets a little hung up coming out there, and that's why if you ever noticed on my 1900, it's kind of hacked away right here because of this line. I just you know double check it a few times and make sure that it's going to be good. You can always adjust it once it's, you know, back up and running, but 
I like to do it while I've got it free. And then I put one of these, it's a clamp, right here. Like so, again, it has double stick tape on it, so just go ahead and peel it off the back, like so. I clamp it in there first so you can kind of get an idea of where it's gonna go. You can put another one over here. It does come with another one, but I just leave it like that because I like to have this out of the way if I need to get into the cartridges here. So let me get um, the line hooked back up for the waste tank. Let me get some of this out of the way here. Let me get this hooked up real quick. And remember that's our connector. Now normally you wouldn't have to connect two pieces of hose, but since this one had the piece of hose on it, I have to add to it and I have a, my hose is shorter than what it should be because uh, I use some on another printer. You don't need to put any kind of clamps or anything on here. There's no pressure in it. so. Just put it together like so. That's basically what it would be like inside. And then route this to um, an empty container of some sort. I'm gonna find something real quick because the hose I have isn't long enough. So let me look for something real quick and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So we got everything in. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the printer back in. I spilled ink down the front of here, but it happens. Turn it on. Well, that's doing its thing. Make sure that you have your, uh, like I said, the cleaning cartridges are very important. Um, good scenario is, is you're gonna go away for a couple days or it's the weekend or whatever the case may be, you're not gonna print for a while. What I recommend doing is you remove those cartridges and you put your cleaning cartridges in there and then go ahead and run a couple, a couple, three, four, five uh, print head cleanings until you start getting clear fluid out of the back hose. All right. Um, that's going to help prevent the head from plugging up. The problem with DTF ink is that it's so problematic. It dries out really quick, especially if the room, wherever you have the printer, if it's a really hot temperature, like in my shop here, it's hot, especially in the afternoon. When the sun comes down, the sun, when it settles in the west, it goes against the big garage door. There's a big metal overhead door behind me. And when the sun starts hitting that, it really gets super heated in here. And I can not print for 20 minutes and the white ink won't come out. It'll come out like halfway through the print. So I have to remember if I don't print, then I need to run a, a head cleaning before I start printing again. Otherwise, I'm going to waste that sheet of film and then a bunch of ink because it's going to be useless without the white ink, right? So when this is done doing its thing, um, we're going to go ahead and run a couple head cleanings on this to get the head primed with DTF ink. And then we're going to go ahead and do a test print, all right? And that should be about it. Now you can see... If you can see in the back here, I'm trying to look at my little monitor over here if you guys can see that. There's already ink coming out of the I'm sorry for my poor camera skills. It's already got ink coming out of there. So once it does its initial head cleaning when you first turn it on, go ahead and hold the droplet button here. You're gonna hold it for like five to 10 seconds and then it's gonna initialize another head cleaning. You're gonna wanna do this probably at least three times I would say to make sure that you get the DTF ink 
whatever, if there's any air left in the line, it's gonna help get that out of there. And then it's gonna go ahead and flush out anything else that's inside the head, which would be the cleaning solution that's still in there. Because the last time that we messed with this printer, we had the cleaning cartridges installed, okay? So we'll let it, we'll let it do that. And again, it's, uh, the ink is coming into the waste container here in the back. I'm really nervous about having this little dish right here because I'm afraid I'm gonna spill it. But I don't have a long enough hose to connect it to a bottle. So for right now, that's gonna have to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some film, get some film in here, and then uh, I'll show you what I do for an output tray on these. Works really well. A lot of these, a lot of folks that get these 1400s or the 1900s, the 1430s, pretty much all these that do 13 by 19 sheets, uh, the sublimation paper box from ASUB fits in there perfectly. So let me grab that. I'll show you how that goes in, and then I'll get a sheet of paper or film and get it in there, and then we'll do a test print. So I'll be back in two minutes. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. This is the box. 13 by 19, as you can see, it's the A-Sub box, and it'll fit right inside here, okay? No tools necessary. And it's a pretty snug fit. You wanna make sure that it is, it can go up high like this. You don't want it like that. You gotta make sure that it sits below where the film comes out. If not, you'll know it right away. Let's push this back. See, I already got ink all over the place. Yeah. That's why I don't like this idea. I'm messy. Okay, it'll slide in there pretty good. And then you can use like a piece of wood. This is just a chunk of plastic I have laying around to support the end of it. If you have the original output tray on here, uh, that works too. It's doing its last print head cleaning. Let me get some film. Now, I don't have any settings saved for this. They're in my other computer, so I'm just gonna kinda wing it as far as like the percentages go. And then we'll have to dial it in from there, but we're not gonna go through all that stuff today. The idea of this video is basically just showing you how to convert this and get it ready to print DTF. So I think it's done with its last head cleaning. I did four head cleanings in there just to get the DTF in, into the print head. Um, all right, <clears throat> sometimes it won't grab the film. All right, and that's common. It happens all the time. I usually get a paper towel with some alcohol on it. And on the feed wheel back here, without getting the fingers stuck in there, of course, Clean it, hit the button, put your hand on it with the alcohol rag. This has been sitting around, so it's got some dirt on it. But it'll pick up some of that coating that's on that film also, and it'll make it so it's not, it doesn't want to grab. It doesn't do the trick all the time, but a majority of the time it does help. And then I put a couple pieces of sublimation paper back there. So it kind of gives it some support and just a few sheets of DTF film. And let's see what happens now. Oh, it's just going through. I'll give it another shot. Put this guy back in the pile on the back. All right, we'll come back in a minute. 
All right, so we got it to print. This is the third try, and it's not the greatest print, but it's printing. Right? It's, there is some splotches on there, and there's a lot of banding. That's because I had it on the lowest resolution possible because I just wanted to do it fast to get it done. Um, there's not enough ink, so we, or not enough white, so we need to turn that up. This was like the first one that hardly had any ink, any white on it, but you can see it came out. There was no lines in it whatsoever, but there's no white. So this is useless pretty much. These are all useless. This, this is part of the process of having a DTF printer, especially when you're first setting it up. Now, this is the second 1400 that I've had. <clears throat> and the first one was probably three or four months ago that I, I gave to a friend of mine. And I've had this one, but it's been sitting in the back uh, waiting for me to make a video with it. So I'm doing that now, but I don't have any of my old settings. So I don't know, I'm just kind of like, you know, it's a shot in the dark really of, of trying to figure out what the settings are. So I need to keep doing test prints until I get the print dialed in. But for the most part, it's ready to go. It's all converted to DTF and it needs to be dialed in. I'm using AquaRip 10.3 or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, but that's it. I mean, it's now considered a DTF printer. So uh, if you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. Make sure you uh, follow us in our Facebook group, the DTF, um, what is it? DTF Printing No Bullshit uh, Support Group. You can find the link down below in the description and like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. That's all I got for you. So like I said, if you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments below or you can catch me on Facebook or Instagram. All right. See ya. Thank you very much.